Hey everyone, welcome to Star Morph, where we talk about artificial intelligence and web development. Today I'm going to show you how to deploy your own website where you can upload PDFs and chat with them using LangChain and GPT. And we're going to do this with an awesome tool called Streamlit that makes it super easy to deploy a GitHub repository. Um, a lot of the open source great LangChain experiments you can easily deploy onto a website with Streamlit. So that's what we're going to do in this video. And we can get started doing that by going over to this open source template. And what we're going to do is fork this GitHub repo uh, onto our own GitHub account and then deploy that GitHub repo using the Streamlit hosting platform. So first we can fork it. And typically when you are hosting a Streamlit app, there's going to be one main Python file. In this case, it's this Q app file. And if you click into it, you can get the URL that goes directly to that file. And that's what Streamlit needs in order to deploy this repo. So I can sign into my Streamlit here. You can connect this to your GitHub account also, so it will have access to what GitHub repos you have. And you can see I kind of just tried out a bunch of different um, Streamlit templates, and it's pretty cool how quickly you can pop up some of these apps. So we just hit new app, paste GitHub URL, and then we paste that URL we grabbed. And then we hit deploy, and that's really all it, well actually there's one more step, which is after we do this, we'll have to add our open AI key, uh, so it's able to actually communicate with GPT. But um, in terms of like setting it all up, that is the majority of it. If you get a template that is still configured correctly, um, so it's great for people that don't have formal coding full-time experience, but want to build their own tools, be able to, you know, deploy their own websites, doing some some interesting lane chain things, and it's also good for developers as well because there's a whole platform um, and framework that you can customize the apps with more. And I like to think it's kind of a mix between a Jupyter notebook and a web application. Okay, so now our app is done deploying and you can see here that it's asking for our OpenAI key. So I'm gonna go ahead and blank my screen out for a second. Okay, so now I'm uploading a PDF. It's a book about mindfulness meditation. And something really interesting that this bot does, um, not only are you chatting with your PDF, but it actually has some architecture to kind of do an evaluation and ask, analyze the content and then ask some questions to start out. So you can see here it's generating some sample questions. So before we even ask a question, it kind of helps us explore the document, which is pretty cool. And that's something that I'm seeing in a lot of these apps that, yes, a lot of apps are coming out right now to chat with your PDF. But there's a lot of different architectures and almost like prompt logic um, and kind of reinforcement loops and things like that that can change the interaction that you have. So it's cool to see, for example, not only does it ask questions, but in this case, we actually get an initial exploration of this document off the bat based on the this evaluation function that just ran. And now we can ask a question. So I can say, what is a good way to start practicing mindfulness meditation? Okay, so now you can see we can chat with our PDF and that's all it really takes to get this Streamlit app going. And there's a lot of cool Streamlit apps that do different things with LangChain and Llama Index and other frameworks. So I think Streamlit is an awesome tool for it the rapid pace of development that's happening with um, LangChain and other AI tools that are coming out. And so that is how you get the app started. Let's just take a quick look at the code. And I th think this template is really well documented. Each function is like very clearly defined and well structured. And um, you know, it's easy to kind of scan through this document and get an idea of what it's doing. And actually before I just kind of do that, let me give an overview of the basic architecture, uh, and you've probably seen, you've likely seen diagrams like this popping up all over the internet on Twitter as this becomes a really popular architecture. And like I said, there's a lot of different way, pieces that you could put into this puzzle. But generally speaking, 
you're usually, you're usually loading a document, um, extracting the text from it, chunking it up so you can send it over to the OpenAI API, or in this case, Hugging Face, generating the embeddings, storing them in a vector database, and then doing a similarity search over that, giving the relevant context to GPT, and so this, and, and then getting your response that has awareness of the PDF document that you put in initially. So this is kind of a general architecture of the pieces we might expect to see in this Python file here. And you can see here that the first function is for one of those steps, loading in the document, splitting the text up. Then we have a retriever and we're using this framework for the vector storage piece some more functions to split up text. This is the evaluation function where we created those initial 10 questions. And then we have the actual CSS and visuals that are on the page. And so you can see that overall, uh, it's basically just this one file. It's not too much code to get this app going or, or you know, to try to work with this and customize it. And it, it's fitting pretty directly into the architecture that we're seeing pop up a lot and it's becoming more and more familiar and workable. But I think that this app is a great way to get started quickly and the Streamlit platform is a valuable um, option to deploy these things. So I hope this video was helpful. I'll come back soon. I'm gonna to try to get back into making more frequent videos. So I'll come back soon with some more lane chain coding and deployment uh, tutorials soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found this video useful and I will see you in the next one.